Hi, I'm Chris Ranwell from Protometer. Welcome to our short video about how to get the most out of your moisture meters and hygrometers in a flood damage situation. We're here at a flood school in Northern Florida, and we're going to be going through how to take measurements when you initially investigate the extent of the flood, and then during the whole drying process. We hope you really enjoy this video and find it informative. So understanding the extent of the flood, we can use several tools, including thermal imaging cameras and moisture meters. A thermal imaging camera is a really very useful tool, but it is measuring temperature change. We do need to confirm what we see on the thermal imaging camera with a moisture meter. So during our initial assessment using moisture meters, we're first going to start by using the Protometer ReachMaster Pro. Now this is a non-invasive moisture meter that's extendable and it's a telescopic handle here and it's a wireless connection between the sensor head and the display unit. Now we're going to turn on the sensor head and the display unit and start to use its non-invasive measurement to assess the area of moisture. So we're getting low readings here but as we move forward into the flooded area here you're going to hear an audible tone and an increase in the moisture value. We're now establishing exactly the extent of the flood. We're going to further quantify that with a pin type moisture meter in the future. Pin type moisture meters tend to be much more repeatable and we would recommend when you're recording readings to record it from the pin measurement. But the ReachMaster does allow you to go over very large areas very, very quickly to assess the extent of the moisture. It also allows you to work without being on your hands and knees, to reach up into walls, floors, and ceilings. Now we're going to use a moisture meter to do another assessment just like we did with the ReachMaster. So in this case, we're going to use the Protometer Flood Kit. This comes with the Protometer Survey Master together with a range of accessories and a handheld hygrometer. We'll be looking at the handheld hygrometer in detail in a bit. So first we'll start to use the non-invasive mode in the same area we did with the ReachMaster to really just assess. It's important to pick up the meter and place it and then understand the full extent of the flood. We can use the non-invasive mode on the wall and baseboards as well. However, to quantify readings, it's preferable to use the pin meter. Now the Survey Master, by removing the cap, will expose the pins. We just press the right hand button and we move into pin mode. Again, we can take measurements, both the carpet, the baseboard, and in the drywall, each time recording the reading. Now it's important in things like drywall that we just break the surface with the pins. There's no real need to bury the pins into the material. So along with recording the readings for the affected area, it's also important to establish the dry standard. Now we need to go to an area that's not affected by the flood and take a pin-type moisture measurement in some wood. And this will establish the measurement of what we need to dry to. In this case, it's around 10%. We'll need to dry to within 2% of that 10% reading. So it's really important to make sure that your meters are in calibration and to do this, the latest generation of protometer moisture meters is really very, very simple. We have a built-in calibration check device for the pin mode, and we have built-in non-invasive reset or recalibration. So let's show you how to do that. We're in pin mode here, and we're gonna press the right-hand button and the lower button together and hold, and that will put us into a calibration check. It says 18.1, which means it's right in calibration, and it actually says pass. So you can check that without using an additional calibration check device. It's built right into the meter. So now we're going to check the non-invasive. So we're in pin mode here. Press the right hand button. We're in our non-invasive mode now. And again, we're going to press the same two buttons and hold. And now it's going to ask you to hold the instrument in the air. Now you really need to hold it in the air away from any object. And when you do that, <coughs> you're going to press the right hand button and that's going to recalibrate the non-invasive. So that's how to do it on this generation of instruments. Exactly the same with the MMS-3. 
Now the MMS3 is a non-invasive and pin moisture together with a hygrometer. But if we go to our menu here, down to calibration, and this time we'll select pin measurement. It's checking the calibration and you can see that it says pass here. We go back and go to pinless and exactly the same way, we're gonna hold this a meter away from any other object. We're gonna to ask to reset the calibration and we say yes. Hold the meter away from any object, press enter and now it's gonna recalibrate. We go left to return. So that's two quick calibration checks you can do on a range of our moisture meters very quickly in the field. Now not only can you initiate this from the instrument, but every 50 power cycles it will automatically ask you to do this. So let's talk about care and maintenance of your hygrometers. There's three protometer hygrometers here. We've got the Hygromaster L, which is our more simple version. We've got the Hygromaster 2 here that has all the hygrometry functions plus surface temperature measurement. And then we have our MMS3, which is our all-in-one moisture meter and hygrometer with surface temperature measurement. They all use the identical quick stick probe here. This is replaceable. And the reason we make this replaceable is that so you can exactly replace it in the field without having to send your meter back for recalibration. So our recommendation is that you keep some spares of this replaceable probe. That means you can measure your hygrometer probes against it to check their calibration. You must keep those free of dust and dirt. So we recommend keeping them in a sealed bag. Then when you need them, check your other probes against them or replace them with those. Now when we're doing our initial flood assessment, it's also important to take humidity readings. Now we're going to take those outside the building, we're going to take it in the affected area and we're going to take it in the unaffected area. We want to record relative humidity, temperature and grains per pound together with the time and the date that you took the reading. Now it's important to think about acclimation for the reading. This is where most false readings come. Hygrometers take some time to adjust to the temperature. Now it's important that you store the instrument in somewhere that's not an extreme of temperature, like in a hot car or a cold car. This will help it acclimate much, much faster. And try and do the humidity readings in temperature order. So go in this instance, we're going from outside at around 70 degrees to the unaffected area, also around 70 degrees and to the affected area also around 70 degrees. But if you were in a situation where dehumidifiers were already in the building and you built up some heat, then you'd want to do that in temperature order. So outside, unaffected, affected, then dehumidifier. So let's start with the outside air. So now let's look at the unaffected area remembering to wait at each position for the hygrometer to properly stabilize. And now the affected area. So as an alternative to using a handheld hygrometer, we can also use this device. This is the Protometer BLE, and this is a temperature, humidity, and moisture content logging device that operates via Bluetooth. So you can place these outside in the affected area the unaffected area and even on the output of the dehumidifier. You can vary the time intervals that it records and then simply come in with your free phone app and download all that data immediately. Now we've established the extent of the flood and we set our equipment up and started the drying process. When we return to the building to evaluate how the drying process is going, we're going to start using our moisture meter in the areas we first recorded moisture and re-record readings to monitor the drying process. So first we're going to use pin mode and establish moisture in the carpet, the baseboard and the drywall. Recording all these readings as we go. We can also use a range of accessories to take additional readings. So first we're going to start with our wall probes. These simply plug into our meters. 
So any of our meters will take the same accessory. So we will now try and establish moisture content inside the wall cavity. This would require you in drilling two small holes or punching through the material. So we also have an accessory in our flood kit that is our baseboard probe. Again, it plugs into the side of all our meters and we can use it to measure underneath the baseboard or go from above and behind the baseboard. In addition, it might be useful to measure if there's moisture still in the sill plate, typically one of the last places to dry out. You can actually do this with our hammer probe by driving into the corner using the slide hammer. We'll talk more about the hammer probe when we come to measure hardwood floors. So during our drying process, we also need to continue to take humidity readings with our hygrometer, in this case, the MMS3. Now we're going to establish outside air, unaffected and affected area, just like we did previously. But in addition to this, now we're drying, we're gonna take the output of the dehumidifier. We're going to record the readings of relative humidity, temperature and grains per pound. We want to understand how much moisture the dehumidifier is taking out of the air. So by measuring the grains in the affected area and the output of the dehumidifier, we can calculate how our grains depression. So now we're going to look at the wood floor area of the school and we're going to take measurements through the depth of the wood floor and into the subfloor. So we'll start by taking a moisture reading near the surface. We're going to hold the hammer straight at a 90 degree angle to the floor and use the heavy duty hammer probe to take a reading just below the surface. We're going to record that reading and now we're going to take a reading halfway through the floor and into the subfloor. Once again, we're going to record the readings and now we're going to drive the hammer electrode all the way in and take a final reading and record it. Now it's important that daily as we go through the drying process, we do this and compare the readings in a similar area. Remember, when removing the hammer electrode, use the slide hammer action and drive straight up. This will avoid breaking the pins. Okay, now we're going to talk about care and maintenance of the Protometer Heavy Duty Hammer Electrode. Let's start with the pins. These pins are insulated so they only measure at the tip. And that's important because as you drive through the material, you can take measurements at different depths. Now after a period of time, you will get wear on this insulation. And you can test this simply by plugging the instrument into the Hammer Electrode and then putting your finger across the insulated part. If you get a reading, that means that the insulation has worn away and the pins need replacing. Now talking of replacing the pins, these screw into the hammer base and actually we've built right into the handle here a wrench. So we can just place this over the pin to either remove the pin or screw a new pin in. A really handy feature. Now in addition we do do replacement cables and we also sell replacement base and cables. If you ever snap the needle off flush with the top of the base here, then actually you can access a screw, a slotted screw in the back and unscrew what's remaining of the needle there and replace it. So there's some quick tips on our hammer electrode. Thank you for watching our short video. We hope you found it really informative. For more information, please don't hesitate to contact us via protometer.com. Thank you again.